is a senior professor from the Rama Tripathi Hospital. That now he work at Bangkok Hospital, which is the main uh, private hospital in Thailand, very famous. So, uh, Professor Sobang has three case study for you to work on. As we are waiting for the singers, uh, so he said, why not work for work with the cases? Case one, two, three, in three groups. Also have a PowerPoint file printed out, distributed to you. You may take a copy of this, his case at the back if any of you haven't received it yet. So I will now give the floor to Professor Dr. Sawang, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Dr. Mano, for your nice introduction. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here among those people who are interested regarding this topic of uh, difficult issue regarding the end of life and palliative care. Uh, I think we still have some time to prepare, so why don't we just divide into three groups and this can be the first group or not? Is that okay? Yes, number one, number two, and number three. I believe all have the handouts. So you, you can go on and study before the music, right? So, so, so that. Uh, can I confirm that which one is group one? Group, group one. Okay, raise your hands, please. Everyone, raise your hand. Group one, right? Okay, that's group one. Test one. Test number two. Okay, perfect. Number three, please. Okay, very good. Okay, okay. <laughs> number four, maybe have to sit with you. Different kind of idea. How could you talk 
Ja, bitte. Observation each group working very hard and very well. Okay, let me start with the uh, lecture first and then we'll come to our presentation. Okay. I'm going to start with the end of life care regarding the lung issue. Even in the United States, each state and each country will provide uh, different consensus regarding the end of life care.
this, uh, for example, in this country, and I believe in China or somewhere else, the population change from the generation of the young to be aging society. And aging come with the illness and near death. For 40 years, the population of the aging society increased doubly. It's a natural issue for illness and dying. Our objective here to, is to know the principle of the palliative care for these patients and how to cope with the end of life care and approach and how to identify the final hours of the death. So we have a, a lot of definition is in your handout, like uh, end of life care, palliative care, terminal care, bereavement, care, and mourning. I believe we pass a lot of uh, lectures and know a lot of uh, knowledge. We need to approach, since the beginning of the timing of the diagnosis of something like a cancer or diseases of the chronic uh, illness, then it will transition to the progression of the diseases. Then the patient will decompensate, mean they gonna, could not help themselves. They need some help and dependence and then view deterioration and finally eventually they're going to die. In the upper part of the slide, the lung cancer will provide very short period of timing when they got the diagnosis and the prognosis will be very fast, particularly the uh, stage three and four or the end state of the cancer followed by those with the heart failure and chronic lung diseases. The bottom slide review those with dementia, it will be a prolonged uh, tragedy of the patients before uh, expiring. So our aim is to approach the patient in terms of the pain and management of the symptom psychosocial care for the persons and the family, Sp spiritual care, disease management, preparing for and management of the die, dying patient and bereavement. This is the CDC top 10 causes of death in, in this country. One can see that uh, cancer and infection and COPD are involved as well as in the American Journal of Respiratory System. Uh, lung cancer, COPD, and new, severe pneumonia are the top leading cause of the disease that we need to provide a palliative care. For lung cancer, we know that this is a deadly disease and very poor prognosis. Uh, it's the second leading cause of death for the male in this country, fourth up a leading cause of death for the female, even they are non-smoker. We need to know the turning point that uh, when the patient's gonna fail to respond to the treatment, and after that we just only can and approach them uh, as a supportive care and palliative care. In the American College of the Chest Physicians guideline, mentioning that for patients with the late state of the lung cancer, palliative care should be combined with the standard care as early as possible. So, uh, they're gonna provide us a lot of different kind of approach. I think from my observation, we already know a lot. 
something like uh, this, uh, for example, that we need to developing a laptop mean uh, the uh, trust for the family or the patients with us, finding out what they already know, and we need to provide their knowledge of the diseases and the prognosis. Also, giving the information for them, responding to the emotion, and establish the common goal for the treatment, and depending on the medical facts and advanced technology, and also uh, goal of the treatment plan. We need to provide active listening and allowing the patients to speak and essentially we need to conduct a family meeting quite often somehow they change their opinion from there to another day and maybe every day we also need to communicate with our team and other providers as an interdisciplinary team. Regarding the pain, symptoms, and difficulty in breathing, nausea, vomiting, nutrition, and hydration, and delirium, that we need to support the patients so that they, they do not have to suffer. A lot of medication can be provided to terminate or relieve the pain. For the breathlessness, uh, I reported in the lung, journal Lung Cancer in 2009 how to manage palliative care in the, those patients with uh, some stent placement and uh, technology of the uh, debulking system of the tumor. In 2014, we provide another approach to provide better care <coughs> of these patients in the Op American Journal of Respiratory Diseases. <coughs> like uh, in this patient, that, that's an endobronchial tumor invading into the trachea that the patient could not breathe. Uh, then we able to destroy the tumor and place a stent into the airways so that he can breathe uh, better. A lot of patients receive chemotherapy, so we need to relieve their symptom in terms of the nausea vomiting, provide better nutrition and hydration, and delirium treatment. Patients does have the right to guide us what we call the advanced directive, such as the do not resuscitate. So you can suppose we, we ourselves develop the cancer, we can provide uh, some view of do not resuscitate. The issue has been brought in this country, and we believe that it will be a better uh, issue in, in the near future to provide better palliative care. <coughs> For the patient presenting with the COPD, it's a consequences of the smoking, and we know that it will produce the difficulty in breathing, uh, Chronically. We need to manage the symptoms of the uh, diseases such as the difficulty in breathing and uh, by the medication like a bronchodilator and sedative drug. Long term oxygen therapy also necessary. The new technology of the endobronchial valve just insert into the airway and we can reduce the breath 
and provide better breathing also being suggested. And we already done uh, for a number of patients to relieve the symptoms. Patients also develop some poor nutrition. We need to provide a better uh, nutritional support. Poor prognostic factor in regarding the COPD include the severe airway obstruction, frequent exacerbation, requiring of the long-term oxygen treatment and development of the heart failure. So we need to control the symptoms to provide a good death. Respect the opinion of the patient and the family. Giving the information and preparing for the process of dying and ensuring that both of the family and patient feel that they have the uh, entire process of the plan and provide better communication with the whole team in the management of those patients. For the infection of the lung, it's a common complication for those patients with chronic diseases who could not help themselves and bedridden and it's a leading mortality in Thailand so far. A lot of symptoms arising like a dyspnea, <coughs> lung congestion, delirium, pain can occur. So we need to provide the right medications to treat the patient and provide oxygenation, medication to relieve the secretion delirium and also when the pneumonia occur it will be a progression of the physical and cognitive decline so we need to support them one necessary factor regarding the religious and spiritual needs we need to support both not only the physical and treatment of the uh, diseases. In Thailand, 94% are Buddhist. They believe in the rebirth. 5% of the Muslim, they believe in the God and they can confess the God in the uh, next, after that. 1% of the Christian, they're going to see the God sooner, so they're quite happy. And 0.1% of the Hindu, they believe in the heaven, so they're going to be joyful after that. So we need to know their religious and culture. Someone provide the summary of the uh, expected outcomes of the early palliative care approach that it should be a good death, better pain and symptom management, better long-term outcome for the relatives, and uh, better quality of care. Other than that, quite important though, uh, how to manage the cost of the health care, particularly at the end of the life. Some of my patients have to sell their property at the end of the intensive care unit because the, the cost of the intensive care unit in this country or in the modern uh, modernized countries such as in the U.S. is very high. So we need to provide the optimum or proper management in a different angle of the, the point of the management. So uh, that's the end of my first task.
Any questions so far? If no question, we can proceed to the case discussion, right? Okay, we can start with the uh, any any group that finish as I suppose. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, look at uh, page twenty-two. Uh, today, I will present about the case number three. Page number two, page 22, number three case is esophageal cancer and pneumonia. Uh, there is a case of 61 year old female patient. He was she was diagnosed as esophageal cancer. It is infecting to the distal trachea. Uh, he was already taken chemo radiation and tetanostomy. And then she was referred to the service for the trachea stent placement. On history, uh, seven months prior to admission to the hospital, um, her, her cough is progressive and dyspnea, dyspnea and also difficulty in breathing and uh, swallowing. Three months prior to admission, uh, her sputum is was blastric, blastric, blastric sputum is moderate bleeding. And so uh, we have to do the palliative care management for her. So the first thing is physical. Uh, I will discuss by set approach. The first one is physical. Physical is uh, we need to support her physically by uh, already mentioned in the, in the management. It is deparking, deparking of the his tumor tissues by an extreme cold. And then stand placement, antibiotics, bronchodilators, and then also with mucolytics. Incubation hook to the mechanical ventilator. Uh, that's the physical support. And also have to do pain management uh, for her. Uh, she was also readmitted twice in the ICU to do the recurrent pneumonia also. Uh, so uh, I think she will be in the mood of depression and hopelessness. That's why we need to encourage him. And if necessary, we should need uh, refer to the psychiatrist. Number three approach is spiritual. Spiritual, uh, he should, I, I think, she should meditate. You know, uh, meditation is the most peaceful movement, mo uh, most peaceful moment in his, in one's life. Uh, I have encountered the most peaceful moment while meditation. I have also already encountered. That's why everyone should meditate. And what about the social and family? Social and family is family members uh, should support her about the uh, uh, all conditions and also with social workers. And we need let them uh, let her to do. What he is interested, what she is interested in, is it more light gardening or meditation or uh, planting trees or something like that? What she is interested in, that's a good thing. And legally, she passed away seven weeks post stand placement. That's why, uh, for the grief and bereavement, we should. Suppose the rest of the family members. Uh, that's it. Oh, thank you very much. Very, very good presentation. Very clear. Uh, any member would like to uh, support or add more? No? Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, second group, please. 
who can be the representative for the <coughs> and now I represent for cash two. Um, I sample a little bit patient 90 years old and admitted to ICU for aspiration of the treatment and the patient has history stroke, hyponatremia and other disease. Now um, everyone has the question so I answer. We provide a bit salty diet to him and we have to care the side that we do the PEG prevent the infection there and other this uh this case uh that is the role of doctor to assessment the patient illness and another uh, palliative care must be interdisciplinary team uh most honored professional uh, and uh, gerontological practitioner nurse uh, when the doctor assessment uh, uh, the, we, the viewpoint to the palliative care six dimension one physical care two uh, psychological care you uh, must support managing support uh, anxiety and depression and for uh, three the spiritual make uh, from Buddhist or uh, belief another f of uh, family member or caregiver and four social and family support uh, this case have must be transferred uh, hostel to uh, to Sheng for stem cell treatment uh, another that uh, the healthcare professional give information this case not curable is a chronic care and the last stage and the five recall uh, the care professional have uh, to family member their preparation for uh, after uh, before and after preparation for physical mental social and spiritual and that the bereavement the covering state or uh, the cause are uh, to use thank you very much Thank you for your good presentation. I remember in the group who would like to add more information. Um, we yes. still have another point. Uh, for yes, please. Remember um, the palliative care for the family. I want to add a bit. Um, we have to explain the family. It is the it is the severe case, not a simple case, um, and about the disease progression like that and plan family to plan ahead about this for him and I will explain him that steam cell is not necessary for this case yes and so we need to need um, to provide the emotional support for the patient just bring a happy moment for him in the end of the life and plan palliative care with the family yeah. and I, I think that uh, most uh, uh, elderly bedridden or cannot to move uh, to help themselves but hearing not lost you can uh, open the Buddhist music or music therapy thank you so much okay very good thank you come to the final one <laughs> group one okay the last group the but is a case number one Okay, I will, I will introduce about the case before you know about how to manage that. But that our case, this case is about the CVA and aspirator, aspiration, aspiration pneumonia. So sorry about that. This is a case of the 73 years old female patient huh, admit due to aspirate pneumonia. Eight years ago, she was diagnosed of CVA uh, currently on BiPAP, we are taking ostomy and pick for feeding. She has actually patchy opacity of the left lower lung is detected. Uh, lenticular op opacity at the right lung is seen. The treatment right now, the had a, she has antibiotic fiber optic bone 
oxygen support we are the mechanical ventilator the prognosis the prognosis right now the clinical stable and on BiPAP and more information from the doctor that the patient right now the bed within and uncon unconscious and about the family she uh, the family her family have a full financial and family support so in the parity care is uh, focused on the six dimension right first of all the physical she has a tracheostomy uh-huh we, sh we should to take care of the gas exchange uh, by first of all the suction i think you know all of you know that suction and rehabilitation by the percussion vibration to make the secretion easy to move up uh -huh. and the passive exercise passive exercise by the family to do that and about the tt take the ostomy tube how to care of that and the how to take care of the bipap the machine uh -huh. another problem is about the nutrition nutrition i think the page the family has a uh, no case because the patient have a illness for eight year for feeding i think they can care about that uh-huh but you should be acknowledged more if have a any problem about that the another wound healing the this case had a bed litten right so we should be care about the patient also uh-huh by maybe some of return position right every two hours or somehow uh-huh and another wound dressing tt or take it to meet you and pick uh-huh and about the infection disease she's barely then so we care about the perineum care some 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 of the infection caused from perineum right care of that use a lot of paper <laughs> so uh, the next section is about the psychological mainly we we interesting in the caregiver and family but that all we should be assessment how the family and the patient oh no patient but right now the patient is unconscious assessment how the pay the family accept about the illness uh-huh acknowledge them if they don't know about the situation or the symptom right now uh-huh how to take care of the patient at home but i think they be they be know because eight year for that illness the third section is a very sure i think we care of them related with the religion culture and individual belief bent because have every every patient or every each uh, family have a own belief man so support them like that and uh, about the family uh, some they go to the hospital just we admit or follow up something like that we can do the family conference or we talk about all the progression and also this is long-term disease so we need to talk about financial concern also. Uh, the legal, uh, actually the patients who unconscious. So the, I mean, daughter and son can, can talk about the not living will, but we call DNR, do not resuscitation for in the case of emergency or anything, some, uh, if, if, if emergency happen. And the last one, bereavement, we can offering self to support the, the family members and listen their feeling also. Thank you so much. <laughs> can present a very good uh, presentation and clear uh, in terms of the uh, knowledge and how, how to approach like a pro. Okay. I, I myself have to deal with such uh, problem every day and maybe more than uh, 10 cases a day for a long period of time. So 
Uh, and any more question? Or any suggestion? Perfect. Uh, Ajay Mano, any, any, any comment so that we can uh, close this section? And thank you so much for inviting me here. Especially uh, spiritual care. So early as, as Professor Sawang said, early palliative care gives the best outcome. The sooner the better. So this is the, the position that you, if you start palliative care in your country, you should not just think of inside the hospital, but how community should get involved and have them participate as volunteers. And you may have a palliative care nurse and assistance to palliative care nurse, social worker, psychologist, and you assess the patient before they have bad news, before they know that they are going to, they are worried. The doctor may give some words that, okay, we are not so clear, but he may have some bad disease that we don't know yet. At that time, the patients start to get worried. So as soon as the patient get worried, community should get involved. Volunteers should come and prepare and assess for the doctor. For the doctor. Because before releasing the bad news, you're breaking the bad news, you already have evaluated family, psychology, spiritual, strength and weakness, strength and weakness inside the family. So in spiritual care, we look for, what we look for is the strength. How, how strong the patient is to cope with bad news. And if he has bad news, does he have a support spiritually? How to interpret cancer, how to interpret bad news. Is, is it going to be very bad? So you need to assess this and sometime doctor has no time to, to assess the patient in depth in all these dimensions. But it's the, the duty of the community, of the healthcare team to help the doctor to evaluate whether the patient is ready for bad news. And if it's going to be bad news, then the note come, the shot come to the doctor. The duty of breaking the bad news is always in the hand of the doctor, always. Even nurse know the diagnosis, you have no right to explain, only the doctor, and the doctor will tell and as he or she break the bad news, the doctor also write a short, a short note, hand to the doctor and to the patient, or even you can have tape record of the advice of the doctor. Then you always have family to come and involve. So assessment is very important. First, bring support and have a good friend available to the patient to walk with the patient. Have a private line for the patient to call in in case of any questions, any problem that come. With all these then start the process. So it begin, we begin early. 
very, very early before breaking the bad news. Otherwise, it will be too late. When the patient is already, already dying and they refer to palliative care, what can we do much? We cannot do much to the patient. And spiritual care is very private, it's very, very deep. And some people don't want to, to explain what they believe or not. Meditation, even though you find it essential, but some don't, don't accept it. Some believe in trees. Like in Thailand, when they saw big trees, they go down and pray to the tree, please help me. Is that also in Laos? Is that also in Myanmar? But in Thailand, we have this. And many people believe in ghosts. In Thai, we call pi. In Myanmar, maybe you call nat. Nat, yes. Nat and P are a little different. But Nat is very powerful in Myanmar. P is very powerful in Thailand. And Thai people live just, they wait for two days. Today is what day is this? It's the 15. Tomorrow is 16. Why 16 is a very important day? 16 and the first of each month are important day for Thai people because it's a lottery day. <laughs> so most people, a lot of people buy lotteries and they just look at the calendar, ah, tomorrow is 16, so it would be good news or bad news. So they pray and they believe in this. Is this Buddhism? No, it is not but well integrated in our culture. And if we deny all this, we say, no, it is not true. Don't believe in that. Don't believe in, in ghosts. And if the patient believes in ghosts, he say, don't believe in ghosts. And then he, he clings to it. Though if you deny that, where will he stand? So if you live in God, ghost, then we say, okay, accept, okay, believe, believe what you believe. It's always right for the patient. If you believe in that, okay. If you don't believe in anything, that's okay too. We support you. And we respect the patient. We don't try to convert the belief of the patient to, you have to believe what I, what I believe in. Otherwise, you go to hell. We don't do that. We respect them in their belief. We don't interfere. We support whatever they believe. So religion and spirituality, slightly different. And I explain the word religion. In English, they reserve for Christianity, for Christianity and Judaism, only two. Otherwise, all, re all what we believe to be sasana belongs to spirituality. So Buddhism is seen as spirituality. Hindu, spirituality. Animism, spirituality. Shinto, spirituality. But for Christian, Christianity, they call this is religion. It is slight different because English language has discrimination in the language that they use. They reserve some word for one context. But for us, we live in Asia. We live dominated by Indian culture, Chinese culture. We accept they all religion and the same. And indeed they are the same. But for them, no. So you don't find in the media, they call Dalai Lama religious leader. The BBC call Dalai Lama spiritual leader, not religious leader. But Pope is religious leader. 
different. So that is the discrimination by words. But in, in context, religious and spiritual, they mean the same thing. And how we approach that. Sometimes we need to spend an hour or two talking to members of the family. It doesn't mean that someone who is practicing religion for years can accept and digest bad news. Not true. Not true. Even a monk who is a meditation master, and as soon as the doctor broke the bad news, you're about to live for a month or two, he cried. He meditated for more than 40, 50 years. And when he heard bad news, the doctor told him, he cried. So don't expect even great meditation teacher to be very strong. No, not true. Anything can happen. And the most, most important thing is the most important and most potent medicine in the world is word. The word you speak, the word that doctors speak to the patients, that nurses speak to the patient, they are the most potent drugs that can rejuvenate patients. Words are very important. Choose comforting words. But if you can think of any, you just hold hands, stay with the patient, so that they feel that they're not alone. There's a part of breaking bad news. In England, as you said, as you've seen in the slideshow, they have a tradition of have a cup of tea. We don't have that tradition in the East. In England, when they have a kind of discussion or they feel this uncomfort, they said, let's have a cup of tea. And when they have a cup of tea, they just speak. And that casual moment, they learn and they just and come to acceptance of the bad news. That happened in English culture, but not in our culture yet. So we need to have a, some, some kind of a corner, that the corner of compassion, then we come and talk, discuss about every subject, prepare for visit to a doctor, that may it's crucial, it's important. So it's not it's time consuming. And nurses alone cannot do it. We have to recruit more people, volunteers, someone may have retired already, you recruit them, but you have to train them well so that they know how to serve other people. Like Mr. Somsak, who came and talked yesterday, he has colon cancer. He's very well trained. He served as a volunteer five days a week, in spite of the fact that he had cancer. And he shared his experience with his, with his fellow patients. He visit patients at home, comfort them with his words, with his hug, and try to elevate their quality of life. We need this community involvement. We need volunteers. And you have to treat them, and you have to educate them, you have to train them very well, so that they can help the patients. So not easy. In principle, you know six dimensions of care, six vital signs you monitor. But in action, 
not so simple. So I think it's it's complete the time for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Sawang. <laughs> <laughs>